Darren and I get the chance to look at soil tests all year long, and unfortunately, a lot of people don't get the base saturation test run on their soil tests. You have to have that. And I know some people say, oh, all you need is NP and K, and all you need is parts per million. Well, they're wrong. You've got to have everything if you're going to raise a great crop. You've got to really understand your soil, and having the base saturation test helps you along that way. Plus, if you want to get a second opinion, it's just good to have another test on there to look at. Maybe you subscribe to the old theories of, well, all I need is this. Uh, you know what? If that's all I'm looking at is parts per million, I really can't give you a good recommendation. I can't even tell you if your recommendation is good or not. When I have base saturation, I can tell you, hey, you know what? Yeah, you've got a high parts per million of this, but you would still benefit by putting more out there. And here's the thing. Soils vary so much from one end of the field to the other, and certainly from one state to the other or one country to the other. And by having all the tests like base saturation, we can actually make some comparisons between those soils and get good recommendations regardless of where you're at. Here's the big thing and the reason why we want the base saturation test. We want you to have a balance of nutrients in your soil. So I don't care if the normal recommendation is 300 parts per million for a certain nutrient, if you know what? You're at 300 parts per million for that nutrient, but everything else is three times above the level where it should be. Okay, well guess what? Now we've got to bump this other nutrient to try to get it in balance. And base saturation helps tell you that. It's the ratio, basically, of one nutrient to all these other nutrients for five particular nutrients. We're talking about calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, and hydrogen. And here's what we'd like to have for ratios roughly in your soil. The key here is there's ranges. There isn't just one number of, oh, you have to have your calcium base saturation at 68. It's a range of somewhere between 65 and 80, depending on the other things you have going on in your and soil. And depending on the crop you're raising too. So for example, if I'm raising barley, you know what? I can get by with 0% hydrogen because I can have a soil pH of seven or even slightly above, and I can maximize yield. Whereas with corn and soybeans, I'd probably like to have 1% or 2% hydrogen in that range all the way up to 10%, simply because I want a soil pH maybe just a hair below seven. So that depends a little bit. And also, we've said for years, you know what, if you improve your magnesium levels in soil, that's going to help tighten up a loose soil. So let's say I had a sandier soil, I might want more magnesium out there. I might want to be close to 18% or even 20% magnesium. Whereas if I've got a really heavy clay soil, high cation exchange capacity, I probably want to get that magnesium number down around that 12, 14% range, something like that. So there are some ranges here. And with potassium, we always talk about a four to eight percent range for base saturation. We'd really like to get soils up to a four percent base saturation. If we're raising trees or if we're raising vineyards, for example, we'd like to see that base saturation potassium maybe up to seven to eight percent. Now there's certainly a lot of things that all tie together and we're not trying to make this complicated because believe me it's not that complicated. But, but there are some ranges on these base saturation percentages we're shooting for. If we're way below that range, we want to manage the soil to try and bring it up into the right range. And if we're way above that range, we can bring it down. Yeah, but think about it. You don't necessarily have to bring a number down in terms of parts per million. We're talking bring it down in terms of percentage because with base saturation, these five percentages are going to add up to 100% every time. Hey, before I forget too, I wanted to mention on sodium, the range is 0% to 1%. We don't want to get over 1% sodium. Otherwise, we can have some real salt issues out there. But some crops need a little bit of sodium, so we might want to be a half a percent or something like that. It just all depends on the crop. So the big thing as we go into this fall soil sampling season is run the test. Get a complete soil analysis. You can use the free Ag PhD soil test app and get that done. Then come to our winter workshops where we're talking about how to read this soil test, how to build your own variable rate fertility maps for free, and how to actually put this into practice on your farm to make more money, raise higher yields, and just feel so much better understanding your soil. Yeah, that's at our Ag PhD Soils Clinics, and those are coming up in February. We encourage you to go to agphd.com to learn more, but they are free events, and literally in one day we will train you start to finish on how to read a soil test. So this fall, get the information this winter will explain it. Understanding your soils is critical to your success and so is weed control. We'll show you how to stop our weed of the week coming up next.